Hello, and welcome back to our Star Citizen podcast. I'm Logic, and this is Obsessite. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we'll be going over uh, various topics that have uh, come up during the last two weeks. We've been away for two weeks, uh, just because uh, we don't feel that there's that much information right now to be a weekly show. So in case anyone was still wondering why it's a, two, a bi-weekly show now, but... Uh, We'll probably end up going back to weekly if it starts getting uh, more interesting. Yeah. Gotta have enough to talk about, haven't we? Yeah. Otherwise, well, you just be messing around. I guess we could do that too. But <laughs> yeah. Well, we do, but we do enough of that anyway, to be fair. Yeah. But we, um, we do. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to try and keep it to the one hour mark, uh, unless the viewers decide they want to have to see something a bit, uh, you know, 30 minutes. Then we could do every week, uh, even with all the dicking about that we do. Yeah. So, what have you been up to this uh, last two weeks, gaming-wise? Hmm. I'm playing a bit of um, Mass Effect Andromeda, which is pretty good. It's okay. Uh, I'm not... Yeah. I mean, I like it. I like the other games. There are some really weird um, animation glitches, which I've seen, but it doesn't really detract from the game that much. No, uh, the, other than that... I feel oh. like the planets are a little... Um constrained and vanilla ish i don't know they don't i mean i, I admit it, the ice planet was pretty cool i like that one a lot uh, that's as far as i've got so no spoilers desert planet's pretty good <laughs> yeah i mean we've i've done um eos and i'm on the second planet at the moment but it, it's good it's good and you know i haven't been able to spend you know an absolute bucket load of hours on it but it's uh it's, it is good from what i've seen but yeah i know what you mean the the planets aren't very big um, but I suppose they've had to cram a lot of stuff into it, and I was just hoping it's, it's, they would move along the direction of like a lot of the other space games, like Star Citizen, and like procedurally generate a lot of it, but then put in like little bits of you know, um, sort of highlights. I guess they, it's harder to do on a story-based game, but but um, yeah, yeah, it's bio, it's Bioware, isn't it? I mean, maybe what they'll do is down the line they'll have like the the crafted worlds for the story and then when you could do the exploration of the other systems you'll have the um you'll be procedurally generating and a bit random yeah, but you know it, it's good for what it is other than that i've just been um i just reinstalled the elder scrolls online for a for mess about i've binned off my uh, my blizzard affliction finally i've uninstalled all my my warcraft after whew, god knows uh, the close it closed American beta, I think I was playing it since, but uh, off and on, of course. But nah, it was it was OK, but I think that game's dead. Oh, um, MMOs. So I don't think I'll ever get into them again like I did before. I just, you know, uh, it's got life, life I mean, changes. I, Star Citizen. I don't know. I think I would probably end up getting into them like I did before on that one. But Oh, yeah. No, I meant traditional MMOs. Well, you yeah, know, like, Star, you Citizen, like, Star Citizen. You mean like uh, yeah. fantasy sort of elves and dwarves and. Yeah, I mean, uh, Star Citizen is obviously going to be the game that all both of us are playing, you know, once it's uh, finally released. And 3.0 is getting closer all the time. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Have you got into the beta yet? Uh, sorry, the PTU? Yeah. Yeah, what did you think the of it? The Buccaneer is amazing. That's it's a little bit too too good for its price point, I thought. It's really but good. it's pretty cool. It sounds amazing too. If you hit the sounds on that ship, it sounds like no. some sort of demon spawn love child or something like that. It's like... <laughs> I, I haven't flew it yet. I've I've I haven't flown it. I'll, I've seen, I've walked around the um, the hangar and just had a poke around and all the rest of it. I, I I submitted something to the issue council for a weird bug, which I detected in the cockpit area of the um, oh my god the vanguard warden. Uh, which, which bizarrely, I've upgraded tonight because I had a free uh, CCU I'd forgotten about from the um, the Vanguard Warden to the Merchantman. Brand new Merchantman. Yeah, so it was zero cost it was. So I unmelted it and applied it because that's going to be a big ship. But I've got a couple to go back and forth either way. So if I, if I go, decide to go back and play the um, Warden, I still can. But uh, I don't know. It's a bit difficult, really, because I've kind of... Without the Warden, I don't really have any combat ships anymore. No, but that, that Buccaneer, man... Oh, my God, that ship is wicked. It just... It's, the sounds on that ship... Whoever did the sounds for that ship should be highly lauded. It was uh, superb. 
Got to be fair. Well, I'm going to have to jump in and fly it after this then. Yeah, just to listen good. to it. The sounds are just wicked. And uh, it feels really good. It feels super tight, that ship. Um, it's, got, it's got plenty of speed, as fast as the Saber, I think. Um, it's got just as many. It doesn't have that. The guns are a little. Because um, it has like a two size twos and two size threes on the wings. And then it has a turret. And I don't know. I haven't been able to get the turret. I don't know if the turret is slaved or not. But um, right now, I don't. It's only, it's, a, it's only a one man ship, though, isn't it? But why would you need a turret then? The uh, more guns are cool. Look at the hurricane. They got more guns on that than you'd have. In, but you'd see on a gangster. Mounted on the top. If they're a turret, they move around. No idea. I'm but I'm pretty it. sure it's only a one-man ship. Mm. Yeah, I'll have a look. I'll let me let me bring up. I'll bring up the website and okay. check whilst we're talking about other stuff. Yeah, that sounds a good idea. Okay, so I guess we'll start off with uh, this, uh, which is. ATV from uh, two weeks ago, 16th, I think it was. Yeah. Um, where basically they just went over sort of oh, where they're they're updated uh, the Derby Studio got uh, not it has nine people now and there's an extra third floor at Freedom House, so it's getting pretty big. Yeah. I mean, they must be past 400 employees by now, right? In the grass yeah. Side. What did, I, did I actually make a note of that? I can't remember. But yeah, loads of people. It, it's impressive how many people this game supports. But when you look at the the scope of it, it's no surprise, really. No, I know. They need more, really, to be honest, if the scope of the game. I'd say they each really easily push five, 600 by the time they get close to the uh, release, I reckon. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this thing's going to keep running and running, I expect. Um, with the the groundwork that uh, Chris and the team have put in place, I can't see any reason why this can't just keep going and it'll just be an iterative update. You know, like Windows now. There's not going to be another version of Windows now that we've got Windows 10. It's just going to be Windows 10 build blah. You know, so the Star Citizen will just keep going, which is uh, which is great. Yeah, I think uh, that this... Uh, have you seen this new grab system? It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it looks awesome, doesn't it? I really like how it highlights the objects, and uh, it's just that's pretty neat. I like that a lot. I wonder funny. whether it's uh, and it, whether it's an update to the to item two point oh. Then yeah, it's, it's all it's the same all, thing. I mean, yeah, it's definitely all part of three point I like that a lot. This looks cool though, doesn't it? The way that you can actually press all the buttons to turn everything on. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see eventually when it. You know, reaches sort of maturity. Whether or not, like, you have to get into your ship and then you reach over, you click the on button, and <laughs> wait for the engines to warm up, and then. You know. <laughs> my my only concern with that is whether they might alienate some people who like something a little bit more arcadey, so they can jump in. This is not it is cool. Game. Well, no, true, but I a mean, lot of Chris Roberts' previous games are arcadey. Yeah, but if you look at it um, in terms of the game. It's not designed to be arcadey because the scope of the solar system is just, you know, if you just look at the size of the solar systems that they're having, it could take 20 to 40 minutes to fly in uh, quantum travel all the way across. Yeah. So that's not really arcadey, is it? I mean, arcadey is just like load, load screen, load screen to load screen to action to action to action. Yeah, I, I didn't mean arcadey in that respect. I mean, arcadey as in you jump in your ship and then you can fly it with relatively simplistic controls you can I still have an open world game and it not be arcadey yeah yeah i know what you mean but just like everything's taken care of you for you i don't think they're gonna i mean i don't think it'll be as bad as hellion where like you have to do everything but i, I definitely yeah um, you played that now then i had a look at it, it, it it's it's not it, ready it's got it's it's got yeah. it's got some interesting scope and it, it could be good when it's done, but it depends. This is really cool. This update here, we're seeing the new light box. Yeah. The the it really does add a lot. It does. I mean the the, the scale, uh, the detail on the um, characters in this game still blow me away. Whenever I see it, it's nuts. Oh, by the way, Buccaneer, one person, Max Crew. So why does it have a turret then? Is I, just, I have just no idea. For the guns, it's not really it doesn't move at all. Well, like I say, I've not actually, f I've not flown it yet, but I have seen, heard in the, uh, on Spectrum that people have said that they can, um, you can swap it out and put a size three on there instead of two size twos or whatever it's on there at the moment. 
You can put a size four on it. No, the, oh, you know the revenant Gatling. You can take the tent, the turret out, and just put a mount on, can you? Yeah, it's the special fire, you know, specialty fire. Mount. Yeah, the the flash fire mount that they yeah. made for the Hornet. Right. Or I don't know if you could actually put that one in, but I know you can put like a size four if you have like the two size threes. You can put a size four on it instead. Yeah, it's got enough punch. It does. It's very punchy. It's very quick. It's very nimble. There's a little bit more um, cockpit block in terms of like you can't see as much as you can in some of the ships. You know, sort of like the bars are kind of blocking in certain areas, but it's not so bad. Um, mm. It's not like the saber or anything like that. You know. Um, no, no. I mean, I still think the ship with the best visibility is probably the. Um, it's going to be one of the the, the Mustang. The Mustang. Have you ever sat in one of those? I have one. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. You'd literally have a glass cockpit with nothing in the way apart from between your legs, <laughs> unless something's going terribly wrong. You don't be looking down there. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, although the M the uh, M fifty is not bad visibility too. So. No, no, it's good. I'll have to lend you my account one day so you can have a look at the freelancer and stuff. Because that's it's like it's like piloting a bloody uh, truck, which is what it's supposed to be. I mean, I've been yeah. in Starfare. I've been in all the ships actually, but like, uh, yeah, the Starfare is the worst. Yeah, it's supposed to you be just, the one. It's you, massive. You've got this like basic line, and that's all you can see. <laughs> well, the, the captain's chair is right in the middle of the bridge. So if you were sat there, you'd be like, I, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I think they'll probably end up redesigning the Starfare cockpit. Do they redesign the? Um, have you seen the Javelin? Is it the javelin or the Idris? The one which they, with the bridge is sticking out and above it. Um, uh, oh, I think that's the jav. I think that's or the is jav it the Idris? Too. I'm pretty sure it's the jav. But it's just, but, well, whatever. They had I this, know the, uh, Bang, the Bengal's got the bridge at the top, hasn't it? So Maybe it's the Bengal, but it had all these bars all over it, so you could, like, you know, across and front. And, and uh, now it doesn't. Now you can just see straight out. Because uh, it was on the recent, I think it's on this one, actually. If you look at it further on, that's it. Oh, must have been Claimer. Yeah, that was awesome. And back further. No, that's that. There we go. Reclaimer. That was the jab in the basketball. Court. That was that was such as us an awesome little reveal at the end. Yeah, because we'll we were talking. That. You were you were talking about. It. It's like, did you see? It? It's like, no. Is like, well, you had to watch the all the way to the credits. Oh, bugger! See, that's where I went wrong. I didn't watch the credits. We'll talk about it later, but it's yeah. cool. It is. I gotta find that javelin part. But anyway, but so yeah, they've like they started um, making cockpits a little easier to see out of, like on some of the ships. So maybe they'll sort of move that direction with the uh, the Starfarer and the, the Freelancer, just because they're both terrible. I mean, even we'll see. Even maybe the constellation with that really, you know, bar running around the, right down the middle. Right. Yeah, I mean, the bigger ships, I suppose, in a way, you wouldn't expect to have the visibility of a fighter. In them, and the constellation is better than it was originally, but it's still. I mean, the Connie's still got issues. I mean, I I jumped on it in the PTU earlier on, and uh, they gone into the Aquila, and you still have that weird. You go up in the central lift. I mean, the detail on that ship is amazing, right? Have you ever seen? Uh, Caterpillar is amazing. Yeah. Well. So you go, you go up you go up there in the in the in the um, in the lift, and then the final animation is like an internal airlock door that kind of wants to try and chop your feet off. Yeah. When, <laughs> and it, it's like that. Whoever made that, it's obviously really cool, but you didn't really think about what the player is going to be looking at because you stand there and it actually shunts you off to the left as it shuts because it, it's it's weird. I think they need to rethink that. But anyway, bit of a bit of a sidetrack. So I guess we'll get back on on the uh, get on target on track. <laughs> Stay on target. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, uh, what was I looking at? Uh, new space stations. They do look cool. The the, uh, the these ones. Yeah, is that the truck stop? It's a truck stop. Yeah. So yeah, it looks cool. It's it? a medium sized one. <laughs> Jesus, my machine's gonna melt. Well, they they have object container streaming by three point so you know. Yeah, but e even with that, I think my i five thirty seven fifty is gonna gonna like die. <laughs> I really need to pay spend some money on my machine. Yeah, you do at some point in the future. Maybe, uh, maybe yeah. sort of summertime when 3.0 comes, I think. That's yeah, there's it's... no rush right now. That's my uh, thought. Good. I still reckon it's, it's going to be coming in summertime at Gamescom. That's what I reckon. What, 3.0? Yeah. 
I still okay. Think that's, that's where it's coming. Because you still got a lot of the stuff that hasn't been built. A lot of the store interfaces are st- just sort of going into sort of gray box right now, and and a lot of the other things are just not in white box. And so you know, you're talking at least I'd say six months. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, you've got two point six point two coming out in between. And I wouldn't be, be surprised. Out next week, so. Yeah, I reckon so. It's it's pretty much done. Yeah. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little patch in between two point six point two and three, which they haven't actually mentioned yet. You reckon it'll be a, like a, an iterative one, where it's, or do you think it'll be a, a big number one, like a two point? I don't. I don't think it'll be a, another two point six point two or two point seven or whatever. I think it might be a a new feature edition, which doesn't require a new upgrade. Like a, a version one of Spectrum, for example, or uh, just like a ship update with like the Cutlass and the Aurora and a couple of other things. Yeah, maybe, but they haven't done that without a different version previously. Doesn't mean uh, they can't. No, it doesn't mean they can't. I mean that, but I think the the Cutlass Black will probably be the smallest ship I have, which I can actually shoot things with when it comes out. I'm so, I'm looking forward to that because I like what they've done with the Black. It really does it like a really nice redo. Makes it uh, makes it more I think a lot of in line. Need to do. Like a redo, just like you know, the Hornet. To be honest, needs a bit. Well, it, maybe it just needs version two of it. You know, the the update. Maybe the, you know the current. Oh version. yeah, yeah. That one that they showed us, the uh, F seven A, looks awesome. Um, I don't know. The Mark two. You know, I think they should do a Mark two version of the Hornet because that's the first ship that came out. Yes, they just did a pass on it, but it still kind of looks. If you look at it compared to say. Caterpillar or the Sabre or mm. you know a bunch of the other ships it just you know it looks okay but it doesn't look as detailed yeah did you see the art for the new the completely new version of the Hornet which is only for the military I did yeah the A. yeah because that looks awesome I mean that that does look like a brand new ship because it is it looks good yeah Mm-mm-mm-mm. so you I mean they haven't even done the arts for this stuff and you know uh, it's grey box in it Pretty big though. And then you have the um, hurricane coming out. I reckon they'll probably end up, you know. I think uh, well, I think we'll see ships in between. I think that's one of the in between. I think there will be a two point six point three. That's my guess. And I think they'll do that and they'll add a couple of extra ships at that. I think that'll come mm. out in sort of May, and then then uh, in August, end of August, they'll do three point oh. Is my guess. Just uh, yeah. Maybe 2.6.3, you know, will have the Buccaneer in it because it looked like they're pretty, they're a fair long way with it. But they haven't really showed any. Weirdly, the Reclaimer looked more finished than the Buccaneer did. Buccaneer? No, Buccaneer, sorry. The uh, uh, Cutlass. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think the Cutlass will be as big a deal as because they have the Caterpillar, like the Caterpillar style sort of honed in. And I mm. think it's going to basically look like a caterpillar inside, which is not a bad thing because caterpillar looks awesome inside. No, exactly. Um, this was cool, the, showing the, the, the different. Reclaimer, I mean, they have an age, they have ages because it's an ages for claimer, right? Am I right? Uh, yeah. Ages. Hang on, I'll double check. I'm pretty sure. I think I think you're right. But you know, the ages style is very sleek and stealthy, and you know, but the claimer is not sleek or stealthy in any shape or form. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not supposed to. I think it's Aegis. Uh, yeah, Aegis. If, 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 they do the yeah, saber, I, so I mean, it's not yeah. like a saber. It's not like you know, the saber is like a stealth ship. It's like super sleek and super, you know, not maybe not as sleek as the the. Um, yeah, it, it is. But it is Aegis. I found it. Yeah. So that's that's a monster too. Hundred and fifty-eight meters long. It is a beast. Well, so the caterpillar is that long, longer actually. Two hundred. The caterpillar is. So. <laughs> Caterpillar's big. It's bigger than the um, Constellation, lengthwise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Defo. The one thing that surprised me, though, was that the Merchantman, looking at the stats, is actually wider than it is long. It's 135 meters wide. It's a big chunker, isn't it? It's a big fat yeah. guy. That's why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine how many big bennies you can get in there. I know. Did you get the big benny flare? I guess you did. I haven't I haven't loaded it into the hangar yet. Right, okay, so the caterpillar is sixty six and a half meters long. It's not that long. I thought it maybe it's two hundred and twenty. Yeah, twenty two meters wide. Wow, 
Reclaim is going to be big. Although they they pretty yeah. they're pretty much done with the Idris and the Javelin, and um, which was fun, and uh, which is I think it will be awesome. When yeah, it's done. I mean it's just finishing that off for Squadron, isn't it? Making sure that it's ready. It. They said they're done. They're, they're going to be on to the Bengal and. Oh, the Bengal's going to be massive. That's going to take forever. Well, no, they've already done like the, a lot of it, but like. Yeah, so the the um, the, the, the Id Idris is two hundred and thirty-eight and a half meters long. So and it's almost as big. It looks, it sounds like. Yeah, one hundred and thirty-one meters wide. So weirdly, the the Merchantman's as wide or a little bit wider than a bloody Idris. Not, not as long though. But no, no, it's yeah. It's only about hundred meters long. Well, that's that. That one's coming soon this year, I reckon. The Merchantman, and I reckon the Merchantman and the Reclaimer. I don't. I think we'll probably end up seeing the Idris at some point. Uh, this year, maybe at Christmas time, I reckon. Yeah, I don't think the character's going to get done this year, but at least I think we'll get some progress on it. Yeah. Well, I like the character, man. It's just a shame the character's not getting done soon. It's the only reason why I haven't melted the exploration pack and and bought the um, bought the caterpillar pack back. Because I've got the one that they had when they initially had it, where you had the the caterpillar and the yellow and the black. Um, Dragonflies with LTI, um, so I could buy that back, but uh, I'd have to melt that to do it. What's this? Did you see the um, the shoulder mounted? There it was, right there. Yeah, the bloody um, rocket launcher that looks pretty cool. This is railgun, apparently. That, yeah, that rifle there is new, isn't it? The this one. the second, not that one, uh, the second one from that one. Um, I'm gonna go it again, just because. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> Watch this stupid animation stuff again. Yeah, that's all interesting information. Which one? That right, one? not that one. No, that one. That one. Yeah, yeah. That one I don't think that that's new, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is. It looks pretty cool. Looks like an M4. Yeah, uh, it's nice. Looks good. It does look good. But that that rocket launcher looks like he's going to bring a lot of potential. It's a rail gun. You reckon? Uh, that's what I was hearing. That's what yeah, I was it looks hearing. like a rail gun, actually. Is you? Pretty sure yeah. it's a rail gun, not a rocket launcher. Yeah, what's the, the manu so manufacture of the railguns you can get for your ships? Looks like it looks pretty much like the same thing, doesn't it? Yeah. The actual barrel design looks the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. Yeah, I was, you know on uh, Mass Effect they have some really cool specular detail on the for the floors for the ground, and yeah. it looks very similar to what I've seen in the, the sort of Star Citizen like videos of like the the, the stones on the floor that that uh, look like they're real stones but you know they're not really real you know they're sort of made to look like that but or... yeah the text the textures are that good it, it, i mean the graphics in, in andromeda are good but the, the sheer detail that you see on the player models in star citizen is just yeah, nuts it is i mean like this yeah. this last week when they were show when they were showing the uh, progress on the the female art mm -hmm. it's just crazy how much detail has gone into the armor so the pretty uh, next thing I guess we, we talk about is the buildings and the outposts. I think they started to come together. And, you know, it's funny that like six months ago, they weren't even talking about having buildings on planets. And now they're sort of like almost finished in terms of like being able to put a, a unique building together. It's just crazy how fast these guys move. Yeah, snapping them all together like building blocks, like yeah. uh, giant Lego. Yeah. It's a pretty cool gun, so there. Yeah, it's just crazy isn't it i mean star i mean star marine itself is probably big enough to be a triple a game on its own i don't know that it is but, though right now i think it's, it's, it's uh, no but when it's actually finished it'll right, be that yeah. big but you know it's it's, it's you know because the art that's gone into it obviously a lot of that's all come from the pu and and the hangar module initially I mean, making sure that the bloke looks good yeah. and all the rest of it um it, it is impressive what they're doing at the moment. What's your thought on the um, dropping uh, DX12? Um, it could be a good thing. Uh, it could mean that they they are planning to release the game for um, Linux and Unix, perhaps. Uh, but obviously, the only potential bummer with that is that if you want to run two graphics cards together. Um, you'd need Windows 10 anyway, because Vulkan's limited to Windows 10 if you want multiple GPUs. But given the power of GPUs these days, 
why would you ever want to run more than one unless you're running everything in 4K and beyond? You know? I mean, I still play most of my games in 1080p. Hmm. So, so I, d- I, could probably, I could probably get away with a 1070, um, and I'd be fine. You're lagging, seriously. Like your voice. Yeah. Oh, my lag is. Oh. <laughs> your, your voice does not match your lips. You're, like, behind. This is Skype for you right now. Yeah. Yeah, my connectivity looks good, apparently, but uh, it could be anything. I've got nothing else running, so I'm not, uh, not downloading anything. Just, just don't look at his face. <laughs> no, it makes no sense. Probably best to do that anyway, even when it is in sync, you know? Uh, you get blind, you'll get blinded by the head. Reflection. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but did you see that in the um, the store update, looks like they're going to be selling that Squadron 42 uh, cap because yeah, they were wearing yeah. it. So I'm probably going to buy one of those. So eventually, ladies and gentlemen, you will no longer be blinded by my pate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Chuckles. And it doesn't help that my, the wattage on my bulbs I'm using to light me are like twice as high as they need to be. So it looks like I'm ultra whitey. <laughs> well, I'm not really. St- yeah, peace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's Brits. Bad teeth, pay, pale, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I suppose the next thing to talk about, really, we're going through that ATV is the ship updates. From around about uh, 26 minutes, 24 seconds onwards, they showed the Razor, the whole C, the Jav, and the Claw. Because that, the bit that I completely missed until you told me to watch it again and watch the actual credits, I was like, oh, shit, can't believe I missed that. <laughs> So this is where you stopped, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. I stopped as soon as they finished doing the wave. Uh-oh. There's Aaron. He's back. So, yeah. I mean, let's go through these as uh, as we do. Yeah, that's so awesome. The, razor, the, the only thing I like about the Razor is the entry style. You know? Yeah, yeah. That looks brilliant, doesn't it? Okay. I mean, Formula One, Formula One is back. The first Grand Prix of the season was last weekend. And obviously this is... This looks awesome. I mean, I might get one just because of the entry animation. <laughs> it looks brilliant. That seems a little excessive, but yeah. Yeah. Like, when I say get one, I'll probably upgrade something to it. <laughs> or you could just wait for like a, a special day and you could just check. I mean, I don't know. To me, like the animation is nice, but I wouldn't buy a ship just for the animation. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Watching I, I, that I, happen from like flying outside your ship and having someone do that for you, that uh, would be pretty neat to watch. Yeah. That's See, the that's jab. what I'm talking about right there. Is that the javelin? I think it's javelin, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a jav. Okay, so the, originally the bar was across the center point there. There was a bar right across that center point in the middle. Mm-hmm. But now they've just taken it out, so it added more visibility to the whole thing. So. Can you imagine how pissed off you'd be if you had to pay to replace one of those windows? Yeah, well, I don't think that would be your (laughs) biggest concern if you had to replace one of those windows. (laughs) (laughs) What broke the window? Oh, sorry, the kids were playing rounders outside. Shit. (laughs) Rounders. Oh, dear. Uh, but, uh, the fact that you the fact you know what it meant, what that is, shows you haven't completely lost your Britishness, mate. There's hope for you yet. uh, Yeah, so... Yeah, they, they did um in happy hour today, and they they did a proper they tr- they created the ability to shoot hoops into the javelin basketball hoop. Oh, awesome! So can you yeah. play? Can you play? Can you play pool yet? Not that I'm aware of, but uh, you can play air hockey apparently. Um, they gotta have something to do on those long journeys. Yeah, well, let's go play some hoops. Shoot some hoops, or go play some air hockey. Or... Yeah, the detail again is just. Bloody bonkers. It is. Let's just look at that. The gravity generator. Yeah. There we go. It is pretty crazy, though. The, the lighting is phenomenal. Mm. There's so many things about this game that's going to be pretty much groundbreaking. That looks like, you can, that looks like you're a turret going into there something go. huge, doesn't it? it? There yeah. you go. That is a pretty cool turret. I wonder what that fires. Maybe the big rail gun or something? A big rail something gun. that's going to cause a lot of pain. There's a cool little air hockey table there. 
It's not, it wouldn't be that difficult to make an air hockey table game because all you have to do is have a grabby hand and then just move the thing around to block the thing that bounces around. Yeah. The claw. Yeah, that's brilliant. Look at this. Look at the bloody detail in that. They totally surprised everybody with that because nobody thought it even been looked at, yet alone got this far. I mean, that's well past. That's, that's great box and further, that is. Mm. Oh, they probably have to do the animations and stuff now, and that's about it, really. Yeah, I just lo I just love the um, industrial feel of the thing, even though it's Aegis, which is one of my favorite manufacturers that they've come up with so far. The fact that, you know, it's different to the fighting ships yeah. because you can see all all of the bits and pieces. They got also a little bit of um, But it seems kind of like more like a Caterpillar style than it than um, than it, like, you know, an Aegis style. I don't know. Just because. Yeah. A little bit more industrial, a little bit more bare bones. Little, because, like, it reminds me of uh, the original Nostromo from Alien. Yeah, a little bit. Some some of the bits. Like that, that bit where you got the little padded um, sidings to the corridors. They're actually beds. Things if you like, look at it later on, they pop out and turn into beds. I don't know why. You, you, sl you sleep, sleep in the corridor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that tired. I just need to find a bed. <laughs> where are they? Everywhere. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> How, can, how many people can you store? Lots. <laughs> Plenty. Yeah. You use it as a slave ship. The yeah. claw would be useful for yeah, something else. Bed right there. There's your bed. Uh, uh, unless it's you. Unless that's just an access tunnel for the tech you can see behind it. If you go back a little bit. Oh shit! Going back is tricky. <laughs> oh, let's see what have I done? Mm, cables. See, there's technology under there. Maybe it's just yeah, an but, access. No, port. it's a bed. They actually say it in the thing. Oh, oh yes! I just saw that there's a there's a support there. It's meant yeah. to be supported in that way. So okay, bed. It's, it's a bed. It's for sure a bed. But it's just a weird bed. That's all. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? You know, what privacy have you got in the middle of the bloody hallway? <laughs> None. Maybe but I suppose if it's a bed, if you're an engineer and you're in that, see that the kind of detail there, right there. See that vent right there? There's all kinds of gubbins behind that vent that you can see through the vent. I mean, that's just just mind blowing detail. Yeah. It's like, Exactly. Detail within, like, if you opened up a wall, you'd find all these wires. You'd feel like a little bit. It's just craziness. Exactly. It's worthy of the word gubbins. Yeah. Captain's Cap quarters. Captain's quarters. Captain. Captain. Oh, there's the Bengal. That's fucking huge. Yeah. That's n n crazy shit right there, the Bengal. I mean, you know, the, the ships have got huge detail, but then the, the detail that they have on the... Especially the tier A characters, it's again not seen in any other. I mean, there are other games where you see good detail. I mean, like for example, the most recent one I can think of is Jon Snow in space. Um, the the most recent COD. Mm. Um, you know, they they did bring him to life almost as if he's you're watching him in Game of Thrones, but it was still not as good as that. That's another level again. It's pretty nice. Mm. So, 10 for the chairman. Ah, uh, yes. That was good to see that come back. That was one of my that was always one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Um they definitely uh, they definitely going they answered they asked a lot of repeated questions. Uh, so a lot of them were like overlapping each other. But um Yeah, overall the questions are pretty good. You got a little bit more information on the sort of mining profession and how things are going to work and i'm starting to get a little bit excited about the sort of professions they're starting to come together i think i think the mm -hmm. detail on them like he said the mining when it comes out 3.0 will not be mining like you're going to be in towards the end of you know when the sort of beta releases and stuff like that it's going to be slightly more in depth and to begin with it's just going to be you know the prospector i think and a handheld handheld tool Which is fine, but I don't know, man. I'm, I wasn't expecting a lot. I mean, 3.0 is already going to have so much tech. It's going to have object container streaming, item 2.0. There's just dozens and dozens. Planetary of planetary landings. Yeah, planetary landings. It, planetary flight. Um, improved asteroids, truck stops. Um, Roving about in a rover. Yeah, but the rover's done. I'm pretty sure, but um. Mm. So yeah, there's just so much stuff in 3.0. I just, 
man, it's just going to be a crazy update. And I think, I think exactly PTU for forever. You know what? Would, what would be cool is if they actually brought that out after they brought the new patcher out. When is it? Because it's going. Oh, I don't know. I'm hoping soon. Maybe two point. Maybe two point six point three. Was there any info in it in, on the spectrum thing? Was the, did you watch that thing today? No, nothing on uh, the subscriber stream today about that. There was a load of stuff from uh, Turbulent about how they are going to evolve Spectrum and how it's going to be included in the game and other and also the different apps. So like the Windows app, rather than it just being a part of the website, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, there's probably going to be Android and iOS apps, but I missed that bit. If they did actually confirm that, I didn't actually see the mobile apps. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's bound to be. Um, but yeah, no, it looked pretty good. But as far as um, giving us new stuff on ships and, and the wider development, it was, you know, and this is a massive quote, quotes, it was just Spectrum. But Spectrum's massive. I love what they've done with it. It's brilliant. It is pretty cool. I gotta be fair. It's one of the best chat systems I've seen. I mean, I think it's basing itself off Discord a little bit. It looks a very sort of similar to Discord. And yeah, it looks similar to similar to Slack as well. I've noticed, especially in the chat and the forums, so you can like it's very similar. Because I use Slack a lot to communicate with you know my colleagues and also various other groups, um, and it look it vibes the same. So um, there might be an awful lot of Overlap. shared technology in there. Right. Oh, they didn't really. I mean, I couldn't really get a grasp on what they was like the loading and unloading, uh, like. They seem to be all over the place with that whole unloading thing. Sometimes you'll be able to load manually. Sometimes you'll be able to automatically load. Yeah, you're uh, talking about cargo, right? Yeah, on this says 10 for the chairman. They, that was one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. main sort of like they answered like two or three questions on cargo, which is great. You know, cargo is going to be an important part. But I'm just I still haven't got, quite got the where they're going with this. Are they going to be mm -hmm. full on automated for the bigger ships or is it going to be manual for them? Or uh, is it going to be like you have to pay? someone to do it automatically or you know they, they i mean they did went into some detail about it but they kind of seem sort of still up in the air about it about how it's going to happen and they weren't really i mean on the smaller ships yeah you just do it manually like like the butt like the um cutlass and the freelancer and you know i think you know those are going to be manual loading i think but the bigger ones like you know hull c hull e hull d um banner merchantman they're they're gonna have to be some automated in some fashion, and uh, so I'm just. I think they hinted at potential um, uh, emergent missions for people, so that if somebody rocks up with their whole E and they need to unload their stuff, obviously the the truck stop or whatever they've loaded at will use their Argos or whatever to actually go and pull the things down. But there'll also be missions available for people in the proximity to actually do that if they've got the relevant equipment to actually help them unload. Um, nothing was obviously definitive because I think this is all still being worked out. Certain aspects of it will be within 3.0. So I think, you know, manhandleable, if that's even a bloody word, um, cargo units that you can actually pick up and move. I expect you'll be able to do that as part of uh, the, the missions of 3.0. With the grav lev system that they have in yeah. As part of, I guess they'll they'll use it as part of of um, testing the wider um, item 2.0 ish theory of being able to move stuff around. Because at the moment we can't actually move anything. You know, it, it, you have your inventory even in Star Marine. You can interact with a gun and pick it up, but it, you can't like pick it up and throw it away or you know lob it at somebody or anything like that. Um, so that'll be good. Um, I mean, the other thing they said was. That uh, they hinted about random malfunctions on long trips as well, which I don't know if you picked up on. I did. But, I mean, but that's that's. I mean, I don't know how that's going to work on a small, fire, like a Hornet or a Super Hornet or something like that. I mean, you're not like. Well, their range is limited out, by get, that. Get out of your ship and go. Hang on a second. I'm going to pop out an ADA and fix my ship. I mean, that's not going to work. But it, yeah, well, on the, on it the might cutlass, do on the Cutlass. But I mean, yeah, but you're in quantum travel and the ship is breaking. And uh, you don't want to have to get out an EDA outside the ship. Um, <laughs> but in the Cutlass, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see like, oh, yeah, something you wouldn't get out of your seats and go to the back and fiddle around with shit in engineering or whatever. Um, same, some, same thing with the Caterpillar. I'm assuming it's going to be some style thing. 
Yeah, I think it just reminded me. Wasn't there a, um, something in one of the ATVs not so long ago where they showed this little burner thing, which is like a handheld yeah, cutting tool? A cutting multi tool, yeah. Yeah, maybe that, you know, you could end up doing a bit of EVA work to fix a, a, a broken. Um, a broken maneuvering thruster or something like that maybe there is yeah, going to be an aspect if you've been damaged yeah if you've been in a firefight i can assume it but just ran this, I'm, this is talking about like just you're traveling along and all something breaks yeah it's, it'll be internal isn't it? If, if it's a hornet and something goes tits up it's probably going to be the engine or you know something like that which you're going to have a job to go oh fuck it right i need to get out and i'll get my multi-tool out and i'll take all the screws off i'll take this out oh fuck i'm out of oxygen <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but it also like it's not like I mean, my car doesn't just randomly break down on the side of the road. I mean, new cars don't just just randomly break down. I mean, unless you're like hit by a micrometeor shower or something like that, or you know, so you know, cars, cars, and this is like five, six, seven hundred years in the future. I think it is uh, eight hundred actually. Come to think of it, um, maybe nine hundred. Yeah, I think it's nine hundred years in the future. You think they would have been able to put some quality control in? Um, well, you never know. There's always going to be somebody trying to fix their Ferrari with Aldi parts. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> because it's cheaper. You know, oh, shit, my M50's gone wrong. Let me see what I can take off this fucking Aurora. Yeah, it looks like it fits. I yeah. It makes interesting comments on salvage where you can, like, you know what parts you want. And you can, like, cut off those parts and just keep the really expensive parts. And you can also, like, fab cut off the metal to just take the metal away as well. Like... You know, so the reclaimer is gonna have some. Uh, I just don't see why the reclaimer just wouldn't like chew it up and. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I was just gonna say the thing. The reclaimer is just gonna go claw om nom 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 and just basically eat it all up. Whereas something smaller will be right. Okay, what's buggered on my ship? Right, I need but a I new wing. To, wouldn't you have to go out there, strip off the really important parts, which which you can resell, like gravity generator, shield generator, um, you know, those like laser gun. The la you don't want to nom everything. Because the things take money to build, so you just go out there, you take off the important bits, you strip it down to its shell, and then you nom it. Yeah, I think the claw is there just to grab hold of something so it doesn't get away, and then you'll end up having people with those EVA pods. Because didn't they show when they first released the um, concept for that ship that you'd have these EVA pods that you can use to go out and you know cut bits off? I mean, it's going back a while now, mind. Yeah, I mean, they're talking I months, that. but. I can vaguely remember something like that. So, yeah, you're right. They'll, you'll probably take off the important bits. Like, you'll literally have a big fuck-off laser that goes, nip, and just chops off the engine, and then, nip, chops off the wings. And then you get all those bits out, and then you put the rest in, and it just noms it, and that's it. But, yeah, I mean, that's obviously, you know, macro-scale salvage, right? So you're going to have smaller ships that you can do that with. I mean, even with a, a cutlass, you pull up next to something that you've killed all the crew to, and then you get out, and then you use your burner tool to cut off all the guns and the missiles and yeah. anything else you want. Just it's leave the Hulk expensive. flowing about. Yeah, exactly. You know, you take out something big, just nick the bloody missiles. You imagine if you took out, uh, you know, managed to pull over a, um, oh bloody hell, what's the big fuck off missile boat called? Um, no, the bigger one. Gladiator? No. Nope, even bigger than that. It begins with an R. Retaliator. Uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you stop one of them, just kick those bloody torpedoes, and you're made. You know what I mean? One of those would be worth a bloody Hornet, probably. Because mm. they're so big. They are huge. Just, yeah, they are. Exactly. Uh, was I, I was going to say something, I completely forgot. Uh, yeah, I do that to you every week. Uh, yeah, I completely forgot about what I was going to say about salvaging. <laughs> salvaging. Uh, uh, uh no i can't think of it okay um what else have we got to talk about this week oh well i i made a really big note about citizens of the star this uh, this week uh the the rsi doors were cool RSI and that's doors. pretty much yeah they had the they had like powered doors off the constellation you know those white ones yeah in the office. they had they, they have them in the office which yeah, is yeah, really yeah, that's really cool they've been in they've been in a while yeah yeah i love check, those you should go check it out Time. No, I, fuck. I wouldn't have anywhere to put it. I think even my garage would be too small for that. Um, for those. Things. Well, yeah. Well, maybe not. That might be a cunning plan, but I think the wife would shoot me if I tried to put that. <laughs> put pneumatically operated <laughs> fake doors in my garage. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
else? What else are we looking at right now? So yeah, I guess we're just looking forward to uh, 3.0 is really kind of where it's going right now. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, The Lawmakers is still always a, a good show to watch. The Coral System, that was interesting. That's just going to be one massive Argos. I didn't. What you can, Argos? Didn't catch it? No. Yeah, you know, it's just massive a massive trade hub. So basically, that's where the Banu camp out. So you're going to basically go there to offload loads of stuff. So that's going to be where a lot of trade happens at the coral system. Offload people but, too. Yeah, it's maybe. Slaves, because uh, Banu is just slavery. Slavery. So, slavery. Yeah. Well. Well, you know, as long as they pay the good coin, isn't it? Yeah. But <laughs> no, they're all going to be pirates or whatever. Um, so I mean, I guess, I guess I'm going through a quick list of stuff that I got off the around uh, around the verse uh, this recent week. So that was last week's around the verse. Um, so what we got here? Uh, they've improved the background music thing that was irritating a load of people. You can't actually hear it now. It's 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 still there, but it's very low. And it, it's you know, it, it, did you did did you not notice that? Oh, in, 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 in the, the TV. No, I didn't. Yeah, I, it, it never oh. really bothered me. So. Well, it, it bothered a load of people, including me, but they fixed it, so it's good. Um, obviously, we've already talked about the Buccaneer and how cool it is. Although we will have to fly it because I've not heard it yet, but it does. It, it looks nice and well done, if you know what I mean. Nothing yeah. looked a bit well iffy with it. Yeah, it does look well proportioned. Well, apart from those bloody great big engines, but um, no, even that it's, looks well proportioned. It's to be fast. I mean, that looks fine. I mean, before it looked really ridiculous. Like these tiny wings. If you looked at the concept images, it had these tiny, 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 tiny wings. Like, ridiculous. And the, the engines looked, you know, huge comparatively. But now it looks reasonably proportioned. So that's not... Mm. Yeah, I, I do. I like the industrial um, design on it. it. It really does fit the Drake uh, MO. It does. And you got the Aurora redesign coming. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's at the end of the day... Though. Yep, yeah, it is. There's an awful lot of uh, citizens out there will who will start off in the Aurora. I mean, I even considered it myself. You know, we, even with the ships I've got, I thought, well, maybe I'll start off with an Aurora and just ignore the fact that I've got all these other ships. But no, I'm not going to do that. But I might pick up one of the redesigned ones because one of the things that bugged me the most about the Aurora was the visibility out the front because the, the, the MFDs were kind of like here. Yeah. You know, they you you had to you couldn't see past them, but the Plus redesign the, the looks good. Pew 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 pew. Well, you're still gonna have that because it's the entry level ship, you know. <laughs> but it, um, like two size ones or two size twos, I forget. And it's like, yeah, well, see if you if you get a legionnaire, it's a lot better. You get four guns on that thing. Oh, get a legionnaire because like two guns on size twos, you couldn't kill anything on that thing. Like trying to, can you imagine trying to kill a pirate in the PU with that thing? Ugh. That's yeah, you just hard you would have trouble. Yeah, it's it's your equivalent of go and kill three rats and then come back and get some money and then keep doing that until you can afford a three hundred eye or something like that. Right. But it it's good. You know, I always like the idea. You got that little bed behind the cockpit, which is pretty cool because it's, it's um, a nice concept. But it, it needs a little bit more firepower to like even vaguely like if you get attacked by anything, <laughs> dead. Um, yeah, just run away, but I don't think you can do that. No, you can't even do that. But, it's not even that fast. So it's like it's basically like cannon fodder. And exactly. I mean, right back in the beginning, you had the Aurora, you had the 300i, you had the uh, Freelancer and the Constellation. Those were the only ships you knew about right at the beginning. Hornet, too. Uh, oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, and the Hornet, the yeah, first... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So you had those ships, and that was it. You know, and I was kind of happy with that. I, I think they've got too many ships. Now there's there's yeah. fucking shitloads of them. The thing is, their pipeline is so efficient now that they're really they're just gonna keep making ships until they oh yeah, yeah everything yeah. else done. Like it's like, well, we have this really cool pipeline and these guys who really can knock out these ships really quickly, and we have this other tech that's going on that will re that it's going to be a while. It's going to take a while. It's, you know, the rest of it's going to take a while. So we may as well just carry on, just trudging along with these ships and making more of them. And yeah. Now, now they've got the the skills and the pipeline and also the technology, and the in-house tools to do it. But there's a load of ships. I think you'll start seeing rapid development of ships. You'll start seeing like three ships coming out at once or four ships coming out at once. Eventually, it'll be such it'll be ramped up so efficient that it'll just start pumping them out like, you know. I'd like to see more variants for the bigger ships though, rather than just the fighters. 
because you, you mean for the freelancer you've got the uh the standard you've got the dui and you've got the miss and the taurus oh sorry and the uh max sorry and we haven't seen any of those uh with with any hint of what they're going to look like after post the well, redo you've got the cutlass blue and cutlass r as well which are kind of yeah exactly you've got the you've got the the ambulance and the the police one you know we've got blue as well so as the police wouldn't yeah. do differently though i mean isn't that just isn't you can that lock happen? people up in it really that's it <laughs> it's got cells in it oh, okay. uh, and it's got i think it's got the i think the first concept for it had slightly better power plant if i think and and better guns rather than the See, um why do you need a cell? Ones... why not just like take off the helmet and space them <sighs> because some people have to play by the law <laughs> you know like <laughs> But yeah, exactly. You could do, I suppose. Oh, there was a malfunction in uh, my gun, and I shot him in the face. Sorry have about seen, that. Have you seen Expanse, the TV show? Yeah, I'm. Netflix still haven't got season two, but I really enjoyed season, season two, one. There's a, there's, a, there's a scene where a bunch of people get spaced. Um, Sucks to be them. Sucks to be them. See what I did? Ha uh -huh. Sorry, yeah. it's late. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, it was good. So. I'm looking forward to it. How far are they in the expanse now? If they got to the mid-season break, which I think the Americans like to do. I don't think that there's a mid-season break. It's Canadian it? anyway, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's filmed in Canada. And the actors are Canadian for a lot of them. Oh, they need to hurry up and get it on Netflix then, eh? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> so, it's all good. I do like it. It's a gritty... Um, a gritty representation of the future, which is uh, which is good. There's an awful lot of really interesting ideas of what things are going to be like coming out. Star Citizen, of course, being one of them. So, with this entity owner man yet, manager, what are you talking about with that? Just put that in the notes. And, uh... Uh, I'm just trying to remember now. <laughs> right, so, from what I can remember now, the way that they described it was that um, you have a load of stuff like your ship and your gun and your grenades and whatever. And it's kind of like it identifies as belonging to you as a character in the multiplayer. So it's yours. If you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so they created this new tool will allow them to actually track that in, in the PU going forward. I mean, in my notes, I said it was a little worrying that they need a whole new system to allow for multiplayer at this stage, which is basically what they're talking about, is they needed to create this tool to make it easier for them to track um, whose is what. But I suppose that's part of the precursor for the ability to lock your ship and giving permissions to people to say, right, okay, uh, logic can you know get into my Aquila uh, but nobody else can, you know, perhaps it's just part of that. I think all these really nice tools they're coming out with, like the, um, the system solid. Yeah. Solid and all the rest of it, their, their evolution and making it easier for them to create these things going forward, um, rather than just going shit, right. Okay. I need to put an absolute bucket load of code in. So, you know, maybe I'm just being, you know, a bit tinfoil hat about it, but, uh, you know, it, I thought that sort of stuff would have been part of the, part of the thing they get, the concept stage right before they move get to this point but again i think it's just a quality of life improvement when i think about it again for the devs rather than something brand new yeah they just they're just giving it a label really which is fine it's all good for uh, everybody else because it means they can get things done quicker yeah i mean they're, they're doing optimizations still and you know like the hel helmets and heads are down from like 100 to 10 megabytes um so, I mean, everything's going to get improved. And I think this entity control manager is, I mean, it is kind of fundamental for a lot of the features in the game, like locking and, and, and anything where you park your ship, you want to come back and it still be there. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Persistence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be good to see if there was a, um, and I'm sure they'll probably bring this in later on rather than just pressing E to get into the ship if it's yours. It would be nice if they were, you could press a button and then a keypad would come out and you had to put your own key password in to get into your ship. Mm. Something like that. Because it, it increases the immersion, which is what this game's all about. It's a first-person universe. And if you wanted to unlock your ship, you'd have to have some device on your ship to unlock it with. You know, it's, it's not going to be... A Bluetooth key. Shut up. But yeah, you, I suppose you could have like a... 
It could be like Ford, where you help, where you have your keys up your ring piece, and as long as you get close enough with the keys in your purse, and you actually can unlock yeah, your car. Nine hundred years in the future, I think that you know yeah, the, yeah. the tech should be reasonably similar to standard cars. You know, you shouldn't have to have a key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could no, but it would be cool. You could have a thumbprint or something. Yeah, it, it, you know, it would be cool to have something like that. But I think a keypad, you're right, is a little bit too old school. It is. It's, it's, you know, that's like eighties style. Um, so. I also, I guess we should pack it up soon because my kids will be back so soon. Yeah, 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 man. You've, you've got, you've only got a certain amount of time. But um, the Titan mech suit is the last thing I want to talk about. Um, so, what's your thoughts on the Titan mech suit? <sighs> I mean, they, I mean did it's, say, it's... they did say that it was basically going to be used for because right now, if you're a person on the ground fighting a ship in the air, you're there's no way you can beat them. Like. You need something that's a ground-based vehicle that you can attack an air, a ship with. And this is what they're thinking. You know what it reminds me of? Did you ever play Planet Side? Yeah. Remember the Max? The Max suits? Mm -hmm. Those sort of things. Um, I mean, my idea of the Titan was it would be used more in um, PvP action which is single play. In other words, not in a ship as a boarding action, you would put people in, in Titan armor at the front of a boarding action to absorb the damage, mm -hmm. not fighting against Hornets shooting your ship. You know, I wouldn't want to see a load of people in Titan armor mag booted to the side of my ship and using them as anti-aircraft fire. Cause that'd be bloody <laughs> silly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, um, kind of entertaining actually. Well, yeah, but it would be it would be a bit silly because people would just exploit it. But um, you know, I would like to see the Titan armor used as one of as like exosuits are now. Like you would use, you'd have a version of the Titan armor to help you build, pick up a big fuck off piece of cargo. What you'd normally use a maglev for if maglevs aren't available or not suitable for that environment, yeah, for example. I don't right? think it's going to be like the the, the alien suit. I don't, it's, it's not going to be a loader. I don't think. No, 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 no. But at the end of the day, if it's just something you actually get into, or even just an exosuit, it would still mean that it would multiply the user's strength. Yeah. So you could pick up something that heavy with something with that amount of mechanical assistance. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it'll probably be used to make, um, you know, uh, it'll be in Star Marine, for example. You might be able to have one person in Titan armor per team, for example, and they have their own weapon mounts. Well, who the hell would they decide on? Uh, first come first serve like in other mm other first person shooters you get to choose your classes like you can only have two snipers per team or you can only have you know x number of anti-tank people or whatever um you know but obviously in the pu everybody could have titan armor if they've got the money to buy it yeah but you know you you would look a bit silly going to the pub in it yeah you couldn't wear it inside a, a ship i think you'd have to you know you'd have to store it in yeah, it would certainly be something you would use if you're doing something other than uh, piloting your ship. Beefier than the heavy armor, and the heavy armor is already pretty beefy. Um, so I don't know. You'd have a job piloting your ship in heavy armor. It would. Yeah, I think they're going to make it so you have to wear a flight suit to pilot. Uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, it'd probably be the either the undersuit for your armor or a, a dedicated flight suit. I reckon. Yeah. Uh, that that would make sense. I mean, uh, if you're in like a cutlass or something like that, I think you you, you might be okay. But uh, okay, well, I yeah, it's, maybe it's it's time for me to say goodbye because I'm about to be swarmed by small children. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, but yeah, but you love your kids, man. I do love my kids. Still, it makes it difficult to do anything. <laughs> other than See it. See, ladies and gentlemen, this is the this is the interesting bit about having a uh, cross continental uh, podcast. Is that it's like what three o'clock in the afternoon by you or something like that, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and it's what uh, eleven o'clock here. So my kids are asleep. Uh, the only thing that's going to interrupt me is the wife saying, "Can I have another gin?" Uh, whereas <laughs> he's going to have his kids coming in any minute. But it's all well and good. So what we'll I guess we'll do is we'll I'll actually lead us out and say we'll probably be back in two weeks, depending on. What sort of information comes out in the next uh, week or so? Uh, if something amazing comes up, then if maybe they we'll just three point oh release date. We'll be back sooner, I would imagine. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll 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 be back going. Oh my god, we're so excited! But other than that, um, 
Keep an eye on Logic's other videos because he's doing a great sterling job on his XCOM 2 Long War 2, which I'm still watching. And I'm still not dead, which is great because, uh, yeah, it's always good not to be dead. Not uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, thumb us up. If you didn't, thumb us down. But if you want us to give us some more feedback, positive or negative, that's what the comments are for. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Cheers.